your risk Council wine guy. I am back again with another wine review. You can see my setup here, you know, with uh, a couple of juices, glasses, sparkling wine. What do you think I'm making? Or what do you think I will make? Well, you know, I enjoyed that setup the last time where I gave you a wine review and then I did create a cocktail. So I thought, you know what? Let's do it again. It is the last quarter of the year. It's the time to celebrate, time we get together with our friends and family and just have fun and enjoy each other's company. So for those who are new though, these are wines that you can find on the shelves of wherever you shop for wine, liquor store, grocery store, some wine shops, you can find these wines. I pick out a few bottles, give them a taste for myself and give you a rating utilizing the infamous thumb rating system. Thumbs up says I recommend that wine. It's a solid wine, can't go wrong with it. Three quarters. I had this at a party, or I had it at a friend's house, and I, I was so blown away by it, I had to share it with you. <laughs> Halfway, it says, ooh, something about that wine is a little off, you know, but uh, I'm going to tell you why it was off for my palate. It doesn't make it a bad wine, it just didn't work for me. You give it a taste, let me know, let the rest of us know what you think. Thumbs down? Well, that's always an easy one, right? Get that one out of here. I don't recommend that one at all. So, now, let's get to today's show. So, we are going to be... Recognize this bottle, you know, I think this is a pretty beautiful package, you know, like imagine this on the shelf perusing by the sparkling wine and this bottle just jumps right, jumps right out at you, right? So we're going to be doing Prosecco. This is going to be Mio Netto Prosecco out of the region of the Trevisio, DOC Trevisio region. Uh, coming in 11% alcohol, made with a grape called Glera. You know, for many years, you know, you would just say Prosecco, 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 and we use the grape interchangeably. You know what? The grape actually is called Glera, you know? Uh, so we're going to taste this wine and uh, give you my opinion. And then we're going to create a cocktail. Can you guess what that cocktail is going to be? It's probably very easy, right? Fruit juice, broccoli wine? <laughs> yeah, you have it. Been most of the time, maybe. So let's get this open here. Pour a little bit into the glass and give it a taste. Look at that, look at that fizz, look at that mousse that takes place. You know, so for me, when it comes to Prosecco, you know, it, it runs the gamut. You can have some Proseccos, you know, that are like sweet, you know, almost like over the top fruity, sweet, just to be appealing. You have some that could be bone dry. I like to find my Prosecco to be right in the middle, you know, just a nice fruity presence to it and also with a, a, a nice dry mouthfeel, but just just abundance of fruit, okay? So, nice mousse, you know, so you get that kind of foaminess, you know, when you have it in your palate, you get it in the glass, nice mousse. You know, you, I, I didn't pour so much in here, but you can see the bubbles coming up. I wish I had my flutes, but I didn't have my flutes with me today. You know, so you have nice little pin bubbles, you know, so unlike, I'll tell you this, unlike uh, some wines, or sparkling wines, uh, this particular one is made in the Charmant method. And what that means is that instead of the wine going through secondary fermentation to create the bubbles in the bottle, this is done in the stainless steel tanks. You know, they're doing it in bulk. So what happens is that when the wine goes through secondary fermentation in the bottle and the leaves are there, you get a little bit more complexity as opposed to being done in the, the big bulk tank. You're trying to preserve freshness, just like when you're making fermenting white wines. So they're pre preserving the freshness and the fruitiness of the wine here. You're not going so much for, for complexity, but just want to simply have a wine for you to enjoy. So let's get a smell. Ah, wow. Apple. A little bit of citrus. You know, you ever just like that when you bite into a lemon, or uh, the lemon, when you have the lemon garnish, you bite into it and you get that like this quick burst of fruitiness, you know, on the taste, that's what you get here. That that pulp, that lemon pulp. Ah, very nice, very fresh on the nose. Now, now I don't typically swirl sparkling wise, because you have the bubbles just coming to the surface and popping, poop, 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 poop. So it's, it's, it's giving away some of the air. So let's give it a taste. Still, I taste for acidity even in the sparkling wine. Mm. Now, I try not to shake it up too much in my mouth because I didn't want it to agitate the foam, you know, uh, from the sparkling wine, but just enough to coat my entire mouth and just enough to get a feel. So there was acidity, not the bubbles, it was, it's not the bubbles that's making my mouth water, it's the acidity that's making my mouth water. You know, so it's very nice. 
you know, a good mouthfeel, you know, nice fruitiness to it, but also has a really nice, like, semi-dry feel or dry feel to it, you know, when I, when I finish, the sweat on the finish. Mm. Wow. I mean, that's lovely. I mean, Proseccos are meant to be a wine of fun. Okay, it's not meant to for, for the overall complexity as you get from champagnes or from some sparkling wines around the world. This is meant for a, a, a enjoyable wine, and it would do its job with scrubbing the palate, setting your palate up for the next food item you're gonna taste. Right? Okay. So now I'm gonna give you my opinion of this. So this is coming in 11% alcohol. You can find it priced anywhere from 10.99 to 12.99 at your local stores, and. Um, so for the Mionetto, this is not finished. So the Mionetto Prosecco, it was constant wine guys gonna give this a thumbs up. And I tell you what, it it does its job. It does its job for me, you know. It, it's it's not it's not overly dry, it's 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 interesting, it's fresh tasting, you know, it has a nice mousse to it, nice bubbles. I mean it's, just, it's a very nice wine. Thumbs up, you know. So I really enjoy this prosecco for the Trevisio reason. You know, unlike uh, coming from the, let me see if I can pronounce this right, uh, Baldo Biondine. Okay, woo, that's a mouthful. Baldo Biondine. Baldo Biondine. Okay, that region is much most well known uh, for proseccos. You know, but the Treviso right next door, you know, produced some great proseccos as well. Again, this is in the Charmat method, not fermenting in the bottle, but to maintain and give you its freshness and its fruitiness. So thumbs up for that. So let's move now on to the cocktail. I'm going to do two cocktails for you. Again, you probably already guessed what it was. Mimosas. It's that time of the year. We're going to do brunches. We're going to do Saturday afternoon gatherings with some appetizers. Heck, you can have a mimosa for dinner if you like. Who am I to set the rules? We're going to do first, well, both. One's going to be blueberry pomegranate. This is from the, the brand called Palms. Blueberry pomegranate. And then this second one. It's going to be traditional, uh, orange mimosa. Now, here's the thing about the orange. We are in that season of orange and citrus fruit, so we're coming from, coming from the fall. So this is freshly squeezed or freshly juiced oranges. And if you have it and have access to it, why not utilize it, okay? And now we're going to top this off with our Prosecco. I mean, I find that Prosecco makes a wonderful sparkling wine, a wonderful mimosa, a wonderful sparkling wine is used for mimosas, okay? And hopefully you find that to be the same for you. I mean, because you, you, you're adding you're adding just the, the nice fizz and the freshness and acidity, you know, to fruit. You know, so you want to use, you don't want to use like a very nice sparkling wine of champagne for that. You want to use something that's going to be fun, you know, it's going to work well, you know, with this. So now we're going to taste the blueberry pomegranate first. Now, if I had to give you a ratio, okay, it would be one part fruit, two to three parts of your sparkling wine. I wish I had my flutes, you know, because now I got to drink a half a glass of uh, mimosa. So, let's taste this one. Mmm. Wow, that's lovely. You know, I mean, I love mimosas, but I also like to try to jump out of the traditional. You know, uh, blinis, the Italian, I should have, I should have had some like fruit pulp that made blinis, you know, but mimosas work great. I think that was, that was a very nice, I mean, the, the sweetness from the palm, pomegranate and the blueberry is tamed uh, with the Prosecco. Wow, and I love the bubble feel. I mean, it just cleanses my palate. Every drink cleanses your palate. Now for the orange mimosa. Wow, you can just get a whiff of that orange juice. Wow, very nice. Mm. Wow, gorgeous. You can't go wrong with a traditional mimosa. There you have it. Your wine review, your cocktail, your Wisconsin wine guy says she is always at your palate be the guy with selecting your wine. And I want you to have fun this holiday season. Have some mimosas. See you next time. I'm going to go this one. Ciao.